Hi guys, this is Step Up. So, the Lord pressed it on me that he wants me to talk about something important that is affecting his faithful believers in Christ. Those ready to go who will be taken in the first departure, the wise who will shine bright, that is the 144,000. Now, there's a lot of increase in persecution going on. First, yes, because these are the last days and we have the biblical falling away of uh, sound from sound doctrine from the true gospel in its entirety the full word of God and his Holy Spirit revealing the truth of scripture in these end days and further revela deeper revelations about specifics related to the truth revealed in the scriptures for such a time as this because we are the last generation and the Lord promises he'll pour out his spirit and his sons and daughters will prophesy and his old men will dream dreams and his young men will see visions so that's all peoples and with that, there comes an anointing from Abi Yahuwah and our Lord Jesus Christ through his Holy Spirit, Mama Ruach HaKadosh. And we must not forget that the Lord promised that persecution would come with this timing and that his word in his word he also states that if we are hated it is because they don't hate us they hate him for he was hated first so they hate the Lord Jesus in us when they see him and the works of his spirit in us they hate the Spirit. They hate the goodness of the Holy Spirit. They hate the works of the Holy Spirit. They hate the power of the Holy Spirit. They hate the Lord Jesus Christ. They hate God. So they will hate us if we reflect the Godhead. If we reflect them, and the more we reflect them, the more they will hate And it will come with persecution of various forms. And this is initially permitted by our Lord to refine us. So he allows Satan, the accuser, to a certain extent to test and trial us. He uses him as a tool and Satan uses vessels whether knowingly or unknowingly to accomplish this task. But unbeknownst to Satan is that all things work for the good of those who love the Lord Jesus and our Heavenly Father with all our heart and all our strength, all our soul. This is the power, this love cannot be broken. And it's a win-win for those who truly love the Lord. This is what this means. So the Lord wants me to talk to you guys about this for encouragement's sake, for understanding, um, for affirmation 
and to help uh, give you the peace of Christ that surpasses all understanding, for that's what the truth and the Spirit of God does. Now, this message is about never letting anyone take your crown. And this is what Satan and those who follow him after the flesh will want to do. They want to do this, whether they know it or not, they'll act it out. And Satan will use them to act it out. But remember, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness in high places, principalities, demonic forces. Satan, the author of sin himself. So bring these things before the Lord, Abi Ahuah, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, in prayer, to bind and break any of these strongholds, pray for the power to do so, and speak to the enemy, and tell Satan Satan, you have no authority here. I resist you. Be gone in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I do not serve you. I serve my Father, the Most High God. Elohim Yahweh, and none other. My Lord is the Lord Jesus Christ, who has been given all authority, and he lives in me. Therefore, you submit to me, and I refuse to submit to you, Satan. Be gone. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, by the power of his Holy Spirit in me. Amen. So that's just an example for you guys, but do as the spirit of God leads you pray as the spirit of God leads you. And if you can't, then, you know, seek the Lord to pray in tongues for anything. You can't explain yourself because then you can communicate the things that you don't know how to communicate by the power of the spirit assisting yours. That is what primarily that gift is for. Now, to help you get a perspective of this, I'm going to share with you a little story of um, myself when I grew up. The Lord God, Abba Yahuwah, he blessed me with many talents, many skills, and a natural uh, stamina to endure and be successful in many things that I attempted. And it's a gift. It is just a gift. It is nothing of me. I don't take any ownership of it. And in these in this great ability to succeed in various things, I was becoming a star athlete. I was uh, extremely creative and gifted artistically. I was advancing and winning awards with um, just the educational components and just various other things that I was succeeding in and I was winning awards and 
trophies and this and that in all different areas. And the people uh, as a child, and I say this to convey the story, not, not for myself, but to make a point. And as a child, uh, the other children um, became jealous of me. And they hated me. And they persecuted me because they wanted what I had and they didn't have it or they couldn't have it. And I ended up becoming self-sabotaging because I had such a love for people. I had a kind heart. I have a kind heart and what ended up happening was they knew this so they and Satan knows this and people with wicked hearts know this that if they persecute you enough they hope that you would give up your glory because it's not that they can have your glory they can't use it. They can't become you, but what they can do is they can take away yours so they feel better that it's one less person who's better than them. One less person who is more special or what have you. And this is why these people do it because of this great insecurity that's deep inside of them that can only be filled and, and changed by the love of God, the power of Christ and his Holy Spirit by their love. And you need to allow their love to come into you. It's a joint relationship. You have to accept it. And the word says, that those who see your good works will glorify God. It, it tells you to let your light shine brightly. The gifts that God has given you shine bright, let them shine bright so that they give you, so that you point to God and you say, it's nothing of myself. It is a gift from God above. It's the Lord Jesus living in me. You give glory to God and therefore they see you shining bright. They see your gifts and they will give glory to God. But not everyone is on that path. There is more and more that will see your gifts. And instead of giving glory to God, they will say, God, I hate you. I hate you that you favored or gifted somebody else. What about me? And they won't look at their own blessings. They won't appreciate what God has given them. They won't wait for their blessings. They won't trust that God will bless them. And if not in this life, life, the next. For he promises if you're faithful with a few things, he will make you ruler over many things he will give you. Don't be distracted by the things around you. This is not the end. This is not the end all be all. But that is the issue here. People, more people than not, instead of giving you, instead of giving 
our Heavenly Father and Lord Jesus Christ the glory when they see gifts, whether it be of the Holy Spirit, whether it be a talent, whether it be a prophecy, whether it be um, the Spirit-filled interpretation of Scripture, whatever it is, they will be jealous. They won't give God the glory. They'll hate God over it, for they are the ones selected to perform this or receive this kind of blessing at this time. And they'll hate God for it, and they'll hate you for it. But don't do what I did when I was a child. Don't hate yourself. Don't hurt yourself. Don't throw away your blessings, your gifts from God, your duty in God, your calling in God. Don't put out your light or throw it away or hide it under a bed. Because others are offended due to their own jealousy and insecurity in their place in God. Don't let anybody steal your crown. When I was a child, I did childish things. And now I'm an adult and I put childish things away. I've learned. Please hear what the Spirit says. Learn. Learn from this. Don't make that mistake. Jealousy is when you're counting someone else's blessings instead of your own. Wait on the Lord. And remember, these blessings glorify God. They're not for ourselves. We are not to live for ourselves, but for God. However, he has called you in many ways, your life, small and grand, if it be, in its entirety, should be dedicated to God. I want you guys to remember that the people only will reign on your parade because they're jealous of the sun, the Lord Jesus shining, his Holy Spirit shining in you. And they are tired because they are in darkness. And they want to put your light out. Not, bec- not because you can't give the other virgins, the so-called believers in Christ, you can't give them your shining light. You can't give them your oil. You can't give them your Holy Spirit. That you've communed God over to grow in. You've petitioned God to grow in. Or that God has willing, just chosen you to bless you for his kingdom, for his purposes. Not to squander it. Like an unprofitable servant. But to use those gifts to increase the kingdom and increase the glory to God. For his name's sake. But we can't give them that Holy Spirit. We can't give them that that glory, that blessing in us, our purpose, our place in Christ. We can't give it away. We're many members in different positions at this time. And we will be many more things to come. Very soon, we will have new positions according to what we have been faithful with. Even if it is a little we've only been given here. Remember that promise. And that is the true blessing that you should be paying attention to 
and focusing on the prize, that is the prize you should be running for. But understand that these people who will not seek the Lord truly, who will not submit to Him, who will not choose a relationship with Him, who will not submit to those He puts in, a, in authority as in accepting the works of the Holy Spirit in them. They are going to, instead, they want to snuff it out. They want to take it away. And they will attack on every front to do so. They'll say things to make you doubt what God has shared with you. Or they'll say, you know, they'll contradict your position in Christ. And all the truths revealed. But I don't want you to dismay. Because this is the serpent in them. Who they follow. They are shrouded in darkness. Pity them for they know not what they do. They don't know. But they will know very soon when the Lord appears. All things will be revealed in its proper time and place. Nothing hidden shall be uncovered. Everything hidden will be uncovered. Okay? In the end days. So it's important to know who you are in Christ. And we hear his voice. The closer we get to him, the more we hear him and the see him talking in various ways in our lives, guiding us, confirming to us, revealing things to us, speaking his truth in us, further filling with him, allowing him to fill us further with his Holy Spirit to increase in what we've been given and therefore to know and get to know who we are in Christ. And knowing who you are in Christ leads you to a peace that surpasses all understanding and the peace always produces joy in your life. And this is why it says, count it all joy for when those people uh, persecute you. It is this conversation confirmation that I know who I am I'm a child of the living God this is why I'm persecuted for they persecuted him and they persecute him who is in me and don't dismay don't despair because light always overcomes darkness. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it and it will not. John 1, 5 He who follows me shall not walk in darkness but have the light of life. The Lord promises in John 8, 12 This is why the word says, Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 5.10 And furthermore, Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Matthew 5.11 This is the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. And he says unto his disciples, and he says unto us all, this walk is not easy, but as we increase in the spirit, 
our burden becomes light. Fix your eyes on Jesus because he promises if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me for whomsoever will save his life shall lose it and whomsoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Matthew 16, 24 to 25. The Lord promises to protect his anointed, but his ways are higher than ours. And it's not an easy walk. Sometimes bad things happen, but take comfort. Take comfort for all these things work towards the good of us who are in Christ Jesus, truly who love him. Without boundaries, we love him. In Luke 21, 17, 18, we are promised you will be hated by all because of my name. But not a hair on your head will be destroyed. Consider it joy, therefore, pure joy, all my brothers and sisters, whenever you face these trials of various kinds, because the Lord is confirming you truly are his child. The world is confirming you truly are a child of God, because this is a fruit, a fruit of the Spirit. And by their fruits, ye shall know them. So when people throw stones at you or hurt you in various ways and attack you in various ways, it's because you are a good tree full of fruits, good fruit. They see a lot of the harvest in you and they hate it. They're so jealous, but don't go down to their level. Don't throw back stones. Pity them. Throw them a fruit. Show them the good works of the Spirit so that that seed may inspire them to also walk after the Spirit and increase in their Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the God, our Lord, Abba Yahuwah, and Jesus Christ. These people claiming to be Christians and your brothers and sisters they can claim to know God but truly only their actions reveal them and their their true father because their actions deny God This is a great problem that is leading many to darkness and forbidding many more to come to Christ because they see these so-called Christians who aren't truly saved, who aren't truly walking after the Spirit, but walking after the flesh, thinking they're going in a rapture or thinking that they're going to go in the first departure not even knowing there's there's three and the god is so merciful because you know those are second chances he's giving to these people who won't submit to him who won't obey his commands who won't uh you know listen to the prophets listen to the messengers he sent to them They won't listen to the spirit of truth. They won't receive the revelations of God. They don't want to obey him as Lord. That is Jesus.
And this is why many people in the world have been led to believe that Christians are hypocrites. They see many, many so-called Christians in these acts of lying, gossiping, stealing, etc. Abusing one another. These are not the actions of Jesus Christ. A Christian is not one who says I am, you know, Christ-like. A Christian is one who acts like they are Christ. They act Christ-like. They act like Christ. So let us, therefore, take pity on the weaker ones and, and, and among us and encourage them to grow closer to Christ. In 1 Timothy 4, 1-2, we see the Spirit clearly says that in the latter times some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. Such teachings come through hypocritical liars whose consciences have been seared as with a hot iron. This is God's doing, the Lord Abiyahua. And Jesus permit this because they have a reprobate mind for the faith. In Romans 8, 7, For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. But we can by His power, the power of His Holy Spirit. And let no one tell you otherwise. We see here in uh, Jeremiah 6.30, The reprobate silver shall men call them, because the Lord hath rejected them. Romans 1.28 And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. 2 Timothy, Timothy 3.8 Now, as in Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. Timothy 1.16 They profess that they know God, but in works they deny him, being ab abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. This is the evidence of what the reality of our life and situation is here, and that is to grow in the faith, to develop true saving faith in our Lord Jesus. Your faith is being tested. God is testing all of our faith here on earth to see whose faith is sound, whose faith will endure, because it is by faith alone that you are saved. What is your faith producing? Good fruits of the Holy Spirit? Or bad fruits in darkness? Remember, when it comes down to it all, Abba Yahuwah will allow these trials, sometimes even to the point where it's us against seemingly the world. This is to strengthen our faith because it's easy to stand with many, but it takes courage and true love and power of the Holy Spirit to stand alone for God. 
true love. So these trials are for your faith because your faith is much more precious than gold. So we are tri tried by tri fiery trials so that we may be found to praise and honor the Lord Jesus in our hearts, minds, body, and spirit. Truly. This is how we come out as gold and the Lord's precious stones. And that is the promise in Scripture God gives us that he will take first his precious stones. The first departure. These are the ones he promises. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. To him who overcomes, to him I will give of the hidden manna, and to him who him I will give a white stone, and upon the stone a new name written, which no one knows except him who receives it. Revelation 2.17 And further, we see more promises here in Revelation 3.12. Well, the same promise elaborated. He who overcomes, him I will make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall by no means go out any more, and I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which descends out of heaven from my God and my new name, Revelation 3.12. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world. That is our faith. This love, trust we have in Jesus and our Heavenly Father and the power of His Holy Spirit. We need to believe in the promises, in the Word, in what we are called to do, in what He allows us to do through His Spirit by His Spirit, for God, our Heavenly Father, for our Lord Jesus Christ. Not of ourselves that we boast, but all glory to our Heavenly Father and Lord Jesus Christ and Mama Ruach HaKadosh. For they are the ones that make all this possible. They are the ones working in us for us, with us. And it is only by them that we are able to overcome the world. It is only by them we can do the commands of God. It is only by them that we can please them. Without faith, you cannot please God. Trust, trust, trust. Get close to God. Get to know truly who He is through His Word and in prayer. So guys, this, this is what the Spirit of the Lord, this is what Abba Yahweh and our Lord want to share, our Lord Jesus Christ want to share with you right now. They want to strengthen and encourage you because this is a very dark hour. It's getting increasingly dark to the point where it will become physically dark. When darkness descends, Satan and his fallen angels and all those evil principalities and demon spirits. Oh, Lord, they're coming, Lord. We know it, Lord Jesus. We know it. But we know you 
are coming with them in the clouds and you're going to snatch us out of harm's way. You're going to snatch us and they won't be able to harm one hair on our heads. For truly, we are your children. We are yours, God, Abba Yahweh. We are yours, Lord Jesus Christ. So don't let anybody steal your crown. The Lord is coming. He's closer than ever. Please. Don't let anybody beat you down. They're going to beat you. But don't let it discourage you from walking what the walk you would have been called to do in our Lord Jesus Christ. And don't don't be don't be jealous of other people's callings. Don't be jealous of other people's gifts from God. Don't count your own blessings and take comfort in the knowledge that if you are faithful with the very little, whatever it may be, with what you have and what you've been given and what you can do and what you've been called to do, if you're faithful with that, even if it's very little, the Lord promises you're storing up treasures in heaven. And that's where your mind and eyes and heart should be. That's where your heart should be. Store up your treasures in heaven. For where your treasures are, there your heart will be also. Don't be like Lot's wife. She was left behind and taken, uh, swept up by destruction because her heart was in the city. Her heart was with those in the city. It wasn't with her Two, uh, two daughters and husband and the the gift from God to be freed and saved it was back there in the wicked city with the wicked with the rest of her wicked family she was left behind to destruction don't be like that don't be like Lot's wife Don't store your treasures up in this world. Don't look at what you don't have in this world or what other people have in this world because you know what? This world is coming to an end very quickly. But more importantly, where do you want to stay? Here on earth? Or in heaven? For the time of testing is coming upon us. It is at the door, and so is our Lord Jesus Christ. Revelation 3.11 Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Don't give up your positions. Don't squander your blessings. Don't hide the light of Jesus in you. He's coming quickly. And he's a rewarder of those who serve him and diligently seek him. Like good children. Pray for the lost. Give them your forgiveness. For if you do not forgive, the Lord Abba Yahweh will not permit your forgiveness either. You must forgive to be forgiven. These people, you should feel sorry for them. They know not what they do. They don't see. They are blinded by their reprobate minds in the faith. But... 
soon. They will see very quickly. When these things come to pass, And remember, the Lord Jesus is in control. Our Heavenly Father is in control of all things. And ultimately, one day, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and King of all. He is Master of us all. Whether we serve Him or whether we serve Him not, so you choose this day whom you serve. For there are rewards and consequences for those choices. Whichever you choose. The Lord has warned you and will continue to warn you in spirit and in truth through his word and through his people. Faithful and true spiritual Israel. I pray this has encouraged you and blessed you as it has me. Hang on, guys. Remember these truths. Remember the truths of God. Hold fast to that which you have, so no man take your crown. Jesus is coming. Abba bless you and all your own. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.